welcome back to the channel. You may notice that I've raced along a little bit. Now what I've done is I've tied that, not sure if it's repairable hardtop, to the roof. And then I've also done some repairing of the rain rail here at the top. I've still got a little bit to do there, but I'm going to need to whip this panel off at the top. And then we can give the whole panel here a skim of filler. With quarter panels, you'd never do get them perfect. They always do require a slight skim of filler and this one is no different although it isn't too bad i'd much rather change it for a whole new wing but i didn't, wasn't sure if those were available and um, since buying this one i found out that they are available but the cost i think is 1167 pound for one wing that's crazy money it probably would be quicker with one then though because it'd have a new rain mail along with it as well so i won't be doing all this mess around with it at the top today i'm going to finish off repairing the rain mail give this panel here a good old skim of filler and then before we spin the car around, I also want to whip this wheel off and whip the front wheel off. And then I want to bare metal both arches just to make sure there's no hidden rust in there because there is quite a thick layer of underseal. Anyway, let's crack on. I've now got the soft top cover fully unbolted. Um, two of them are snapped. Ah, and it's still snapped. Brilliant. Two of them have come out thanks to the trusty induction nut heater. Yeah, this is looking like another panel that's going to need quite a bit of repairing. I did think originally it was quite solid, but yeah, all around where the hinge sort of bolts down, it is absolutely buggered. There we go. The mechanism is also unbolted from the centre there as well. This can also be hidden in a lot till a later date. Yeah, that is a right mess. So we can get in the corner here to get the end of the rain rail repaired. Here I've boxed off the panel nicely, removed all the rust, ready for the patch. This one's going to be butt welded in nicely, so no need for the joggler. Here it is before the time lapse with a few little tacks on it. And now time to lay the tacks on tacks on tacks. Being very careful not to put too much heat into the panel. And there's the final result, not bad at all. It's now time for the bit that everybody hates. We have to apply a little bit of filler on here. Now it's not too bad. There is a slight little bit of warping. I've not wanted to over grind it. If you over grind it, the metal goes very thin. And you end up with very, very small hairline cracks that you can't really see. Until like, you go over speed bumps, then you might end up with like a little crack down the filler. The only way to avoid this, obviously, is to buy a full panel and plug weld it on. So, yeah, I'm going to give this a nice little skim now. As always, with filler, it is a P of filler to a golf ball of hardener. Most of this will be sanded down. As I say, it shouldn't really be the enemy of filler. Filler isn't that bad. It sucks that we've put quarters on. Phil is always recommended to be applied to bare metal, although apparently you can use epoxy primer. And there we go, all skimmed up nicely there. Now, a lot of the repairs around the rain rail at the top have taken me absolutely ages. It took so long, I really didn't even want to film it. As I said in a previous video, this panel was £74.50 plus that. I could have got a panel that went right to the top there and went all the way to the rear lights. There's a huge price difference on those genuine reproduction panels. The genuine reproduction panels cost £1,075 plus that. Um, yeah, completely out of budget. Don't think it was worth it at all. Comment down below if you would have gone for the £75 plus that or £1,075 plus that. Anyway, let's whip this wheel off. Scrape out all the arch and see if we can find any more rust. As you will have seen in a previous video, and when I had the car outside before I started any of the welding work, I whipped this wheel off and I jet washed it and I said, yeah, that's really, really solid inside, that's gonna be fine. There's not really gonna be any or much welding at all to be done. But when I was welding on this wing here, uh, we had a small fire in the corner. Now that small fire has revealed a small hole. So I wanna get this wheel off, jack it up, and bare metal on the arch. Yeah, because I'd rather deal with all the rust on this side, all the main rust, before moving on to the other side. It doesn't look like too big of a job anyway. So yeah, let's see. Just gonna crack the wheel off first, crack all the nuts, and then we'll get it jacked up. If you didn't get the hint already from the thumbnail, my tool of choice is a heat gun. So yeah, that's half of it almost done. Um, I'm not really sure of the best way to get rid of this residue here. If anyone can think of a good way or has used a good way to get rid of the last of the remnants, um, please do comment down below. But yeah, overall, this is looking absolutely amazing. I think this thick layer of underseal 
has actually saved the car rather than hiding more gremlins. Obviously there's the little hole there which I'm going to need to attend to which will be a little bit of a nightmare now with the access. Um, but yeah, even it's even got all the original panel drawing lines here. I mean, usually that's, those are the places where it would rust out, you know. Water gets between the two skins and you'd expect to be a patch all along there. And then all along there. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's has had an outer arch at some point. We can see sort of a line there. But to me that looks quite factory. Yeah, anyway, let's, let's carry on with the other side and then see what else we uncover. I've always found the heat gun to be the quickest way of removing that thick sludgy underseal. Comment down below if you've got a better way. And after all that, I've now broke my heat gun. Another tool I'm going to need to replace. So I guess we'll be bobbing to tool station later on. So yeah, I've ended up having to get the angle grinder attachment on it just to finish it off. It's a lot slower with these, but it does a good job of cleaning off the last few remnants. But yeah, looking in here, it's actually really, really good. There's no evidence of any welding other than what looks to be factory original world in there. Yeah, there's just two areas to patch, like a thought, no other bits. Obviously, I'm gonna have to do a bit of finishing off and tidying up where the panels, or well, my new panels join. But I'm happy with all that overall. So all I'm going to do here now is, I just wanna get these holes just boxed off. I am going to get the trusty old angle grinder and get them a bit more square looking. You don't really need to do this, but if someone pulls the carpet up inside the car, it makes it look a lot neater and it's overall a better job, which is what we want to do, isn't it? And so here we go, all nicely boxed off. As I say, I'm gonna have to patch that. That, there's another seam there that needs welding between the end of the sill and the arch and then the corner piece here. Obviously pattern parts, they don't really fit. So you do have to do some modifications yourself. A big apology here about the awful camera angle. Unfortunately, my camera is no way near small enough to fit in the small arch space. Not that I'd want to put it in there anyway, I'm pretty sure I'd probably break the camera. For anyone that's welded before or welds regularly, we'll know that there's nothing worse than welding in a tight, confined space. Extremely unpleasant. Definitely worse than welding upside down for sure. And there we go, far from perfect, like I say, I am just a hobbyist. We've got a few patches in there that shouldn't be seen once painted. The plan for this is to go full yellow Schultz underneath, almost like a factory finish. But yeah, I'm very happy overall with how good it is under here, you know? It could be a lot worse. This is very much an unblessed car. Anyway, let's crack on with the front. We're up in the air, the wheel is nice and loose and off. Obviously it looks very crispy under here. But yeah, again, this didn't look too bad and when we jet washed it. Obviously I've not done any welding around this front end so we've had no fires and we've had no holes uncovered so far. Let's scrape it off with my brand new heat gun. And um, this was only 22 quid from B&Q and it even comes with a little scrapey nozzly thing. So. It might even make lighter work of it than my, or my dad's battered old heat gun. Yeah, anyway, right, let's crack on. I just want to pause the video there and say that this attachment is absolute crap. It just pushes straight down. Um, so I think I'll go get my proper scraper back. <laughs> my old heat gun must have been on its way out for sure. This new one is so much hotter, so much quicker and so much better and an absolute bargain for 22 quid. If anyone needs a new heat gun, I'd definitely recommend one of these. Um, yeah, I'm <laughs> literally speechless. It's absolutely immaculate under all that under seal. There's no patches, no welding whatsoever. Um, yeah, let's do the front half and see if we've got the same story. Although I suspect not, because I think I can see some seams there and then down there behind some of the thicker under seal right let's see what's under there i'll be honest with you i've been absolutely bricking it for this obviously this is the thickest bit of under seal on the car and definitely looks like a patchwork quilt but we will see judging from the front end of the car i'm expecting bad things from this front end of the panel But yeah, so far it doesn't look too bad at all, does it? 
So yeah, overall, absolutely amazing condition. There's literally no rust here whatsoever. It's all really clean, good condition. And they say that thick wax oily underseal stuff has definitely saved this car. So there's one patch there, but we sort of knew that already. But if you look from the front side, you can see the remnants of that. Although I was expecting to see some welding down there, but it just turns out to be a very thick layer of underseal. And there's a bit of surface rust there, so I don't know if someone slapped it over that. But the whole of the front end will be replaced with my replacement front end anyway, so that doesn't matter too much. And one final thing I also want to show you is the underneath of the floor pan. Looks very nice and clean, I hope you'll agree. So it's only had one coat of this red oxide primer just to stop the surface rust. Definitely need quite a few more coats of the red oxide primer, I'd probably say another two just to be safe. I will then go over it with the seam sealer and it will be ready then to be schultzed in obviously bright yellow body colour. But obviously I'll want to drop off all the suspension before that, poly brush it all. But yeah that's absolutely miles away at the minute. And with where we're up to now, I am happy with this side. The whole front end's going to be left until I've done something and got rid of the white 944. Because um, at the minute that's in the way, because I'm literally driving it in and out constantly. Um, I want the car in the centre of the garage for that. So I might have sort of like the whole front end pointing towards the door. So then I can line up both sides of the wings and front end. So, you know, make sure it all looks nice and neat and tidy. Um, so yeah, join me next time where I will actually be spinning the car around and then we can make a start on the back end of that side and getting that structurally sound. And thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, press that subscribe button, and we will see you next time.